So I'm going to be doing a book review video. I have eight books, so let's just get right into it. So this is the second book in the Outlander series. It's called Dragonfly and Ember, Amber, and it's by Diana Go Gobbledon. I guess that's how you say her last name. And this is what it looks like. These books are really long, so they're, oh, they are going to take you a long time to finish. This one had, let me see, like 900 pages in it. And there was only like 40 plus chapters in it, like 40 to 50 chapters in it. And it was a really, it was really good. I did, like I said, I don't know, I mean, the last one, the last review I did, I didn't explain the Outlander, the first book, the Outlander, the first book in the series called Outlander, and it's about this woman, it's after World War II ends, and she gets um, sucked into this, <clears throat> well, she, she travels back in time through these rocks at Craig Dune, and... She ends up trying to, in the first book, she tries to end up, she's trying to go back to that place to go back to her life in the 1940s, but she ends up marrying um, a Scotsman because she ends up in Scotland and stuff like that. So the second book, it takes place, it picks up where that book takes place. Like I said, it's called Dragonfly and Amber. And what this book basically about is about her, um, Claire and Jamie, those are the two main characters, go to France so they can stop the Jacobite war that's coming with, um, Ch Prince Charles. Yeah, Prince Charles Stuart. And it's a really good book. I really liked it. And the, if you haven't seen or if you don't have the DVDs of it, I did watch the Outlander first and second season because the third season are on DVD unless it's not where I've been looking for it. Um, they don't have it where I've been looking for it. So it's a really good book. I really like it. These books really draw you in. I mean, it's really good. And this book goes back and forth. It goes back and forth. It starts out in 18... I mean, it starts out in 1968 where she actually is in the present. She's not back in Scotland. So it goes back and forth. So it's a really good book. I really liked it. It's a really good book. And then there's a surprise twist at the end. So you guys can know. Because what happens is, is I think in 1948 or something. She comes back. <clears throat> Claire tra time travels back to the night to um, 1948. And she's trying to figure out what happened to Jamie. Because she wasn't there for the, the battle where he's supposed to die. A lot of Scotsmen are supposed to die in this one battle. And then she, she comes back. Um, and in 1968, she comes back to the place where she first, um, she first came to in Scotland, so she could figure out what happened to the Scotsman at that battle. So, this one is called Summer Sisters. It's by Judy Bloom, or Blown, have you say her last name, this one it looks like. And this book was really, really weird. Um, the first, it only has 395 pages in it, and this book is about the, these two girls who are best friends, and the one, Vix, Victoria, she goes, um, to her parent, to Caitlin's parents, um, place in the place called The Vineyard, and they go there, they go there every summer for a couple years, and what ends up happening is it just takes place, like, in different parts, like, from the first time to the last time that Vix slash Victoria, um, was there. And what happens is, is that towards the end of the book, it takes place in present day where Caitlin's get married to Vix's old boyfriend that she had when she visited them in the summer. And, she, um, Vix starts dating one of Caitlin's brother's friends and they end up getting married, and then Caitlin gets pregnant and stuff. And then that, that when she was pregnant, that's when things get better in the book. And for some reason, I don't know why. It has a shocking ending at the end. But for some reason, I don't know why in every chapter, they do, like, um, they finish the chapter, and then they do some, well, it's, they don't, sometimes it's, like, at the end of the chapter, and sometimes it's, like, in the middle of the chapter, where they do different characters' point of views in this chapter, where it's like Caitlyn's mom or her stepmom or 
Caitlyn, I mean, um, Vix's mom and stuff like that. It's really weird. I really don't know why that's in there because it doesn't have any effect on the rest of the story. So, I mean, this book was just okay, but the, the ending in it was really, really, really shocking. It was kind of like one of those books where it was left unanswered. So it was like, you either believe this happened, or you believe this happened, and stuff like that. It was a really good book. Well, okay book. I've never read anything by this author, so that's probably why I'm not used to those books. So this book is a series from a series called The Secrets, Secrets of the Blue Hill Library. It's number eight in the series. I don't read these in the order that they go in. I just read them when I get them from different um, sales and stuff. This is called All Sewn Up, and it's by Emily Thomas. And it's about this woman named Annie who inherited her great aunt Edie's a state that she turned into a library so half of her house the bottom half is a library and the top half is where her and her family live and every once in a while she'll go up into the attic or she'll find some like really weird thing that she never knew about Annie her aunt Edie having and she found this receipt for these 24 really expensive sewing machines and Annie Annie tries to figure out what happened to all 24 of them. The first 12 she finds out, usually in the beginning of the book, she found out about what happened to the first 12, and then she's trying to figure out what happened to the last 12 of the sewing machines. And her daughter, Lindy, Liddy, L-I-D-D-I-E, is collecting winter coats for their church's um, donation bin because it's the winter time. And this is what it looks like. It, these books are really good. They don't take you that long to read. And I really like the the um, the material of the book. Because it's like a hardback material. And I really like all the books um, are different colors and everything. It's really cute. I really like it. So if you really like mysteries, I would suggest reading these books. And if you are, you know, a person that's hard-pressed for time in a day or whatever. These books are really good. They don't take that long. The chapters are really short in them. They're a really good book. I really like them. So this is another book. Now this isn't, this, do not get this confused with Secrets of the Blue Hill Library one. This is a totally different series. It has the same, it has the same name as Annie, but it's not the same person. So this one is called, this series is called Annie's Attic Mysteries. And this is called The Lady in the Attic. I don't know what number this is in the series. It's by Tara Randall. And these books are always written by different people. I don't know why it's like that, but they are. And it's about this woman named Annie who goes, who um, inherits her ancestral home from her, her great-grandmother or her grandmother. And... Her name's Annie Dawson. It's in Stony Point, Maine. And what she's trying to figure out is, is her aunt, I mean, not her aunt, her grandmother used to do cross stitches. And she finds this cross stitch in her aunt, her, now I'm saying it backwards, her in her grandmother's attic. And she's trying to figure out who this person is because they have, um, it's of a person, it's of this woman. And she knew, she knew that her grandmother never really sketched or cross-stitched or knitted people. She only did, like, scenery. So she ends up with the help of the members of the Hook and Needle Club. That's like a knitting club. She finds out who this person is, or she's trying to figure out who this person is. But this is, I think this is the first, this is the first book in the series because it's when she first gets there. And she's trying to, trying to figure out what's happening but a lot of the people, because she's new to the city or the town, she doesn't really know anybody, and they're kind of, like, apprehensive of her. So this is what it looks like. And these books do come with these little book, I would call them book markers. They are in, they are sewn into the book, and they are so cute, and they're, I like them because then you don't have to worry about, you know, using a book marker, and it's always in its place, you know, it just slides out of the book, and you put it in the page. It was really cool idea whoever made those that, those books up that was a great idea so this one is a short simple book it doesn't take that much long to explain it's called great tales from english history it's by robert lancy and this book is basically about it takes us um 
I don't know what year it stopped at. But what it does is, is it takes us through the earliest histories of England. Like in AD or B BC, AD stuff. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't go, it only goes up to third. 1381 AD and so it just takes place like in the earlier stages of how England got formed and all the kings and queens talks about the crusade and it's basically like history but then it talks a lot about different kind of like myths like about King Arthur, Lady Godiva, Richard the Lionheart and more and this book was just okay I really didn't like it I've, when I first started reading this book I read this book a while ago and I only read the first couple chapters in it because I really wasn't interested in it so yeah I mean this one isn't for everybody it's not really like it's kind of like I don't they won't say it's a boring kind of book but it's kind of like leaning towards it a lot so this is the third book in this series I don't know if it's the last one but I think it is it's the Amish Cooking Class, The Celebration. It's by Wanda E. Brunstetter. And if you guys know me, you guys know I love Wanda E. Brunstetter's books more so than, like, Beverly Lewis's books. I think her books are better. Um, Wanda's books. And this is what it looks like. It takes place after the second book where Heidi, what what's her name? Heidi, I think. Yeah, Heidi and Lyle are trying to adopt a baby and it fell through. So they're, so Lyle's trying to, tr in the second book, Lyle tried to get his wife, Heidi, they're both Amish, to look into foster care. And at the end of that book, they got a brother and a sister. Their names were, let me see. Oh, I forget their names. It doesn't even say on the back of the book. Anyway, it doesn't say in the back of the book. But they they foster these two kids, their brother and sister, because their parents, I think, died, and their the social worker was trying to figure out if there's any living relative to these guys, but there wasn't. And in the process, Heidi teaches she, in all the books she teaches these cooking classes and this one is special because it's about um she's going to teach children how to cook simple little meals and stuff and it's basically one of those books where it's about like four different people and how they help um solve each other's problems and it was a really nice book it, i mean if this was the end of the series i don't know if an end of the trilogy it was a really cute story like if you guys didn't read these ones they're really really good and like I said her books are really I think they're like a lot better I don't know why I think it's just because um sometimes when you read Amish books or if you ever read one you know they have like the Pennsylvania Dutch word for different things and in her books like if the person says a Pennsylvania D Dutch word the next person like says oh yeah blah 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 like it, they 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 say what the word is at the person before them was saying more so than like in Beverly Lewis's books where she just says those words and then you don't know what they mean. So these are the two big books that I have and the first one is by the cut well it's the color nature library wild animals and it's by Jane Burton and it's basically just about it's the Pictures in it are really, really, really great in the book. Like, look at this one. This one's a little fawn. And I liked it because it just, it wasn't about all the animals because it was a short little, it was a short book. But it was mostly, I think it had, it only has 64 pages in it and the last book is just the index. And it's basically about, not all, but most of the mammals in the world. And she separates them into different um, climates. So there's, there's like the African plains, the waterhole, um, temperate forests, rainforests, regular forests, the Arctic, stuff like that. And these pictures in the book are really, really good. And they're like, I mean, they're like National Geographic good. Now this book I was a little disappointed in because this book is called The Royal Family Today. But it only goes up to, I think, like, the 90s and, like, 1992 or something. I got these, this book at a flea market, and I got this because I like reading about the royal family. I don't know if you guys do. I don't know, but I do. It's by Jessica Hodge and Anwar Hessen Hussein. I don't know how you say his last name. 
And this looks like it's a big book. And the only... Now, usually when I read books, I usually don't read the captions next to the um, pictures. Um, well, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This book, the only thing that was there that was a truly, like, reading was the introduction. And that was it. And then the rest of the reading part was just pictures. All the rest of the book was just pictures. They separated them into the queen. And then they separated them into, I think, her husband. And then her children. And then her grandchildren. And then it, the last one was, like, royal people in their family. That wasn't their children or grandchildren or whatever. And it basically is like, you read the introduction, and then all the rest of it is basically separated into, the, separated into those parts. And then all it is is just captions. It's just captions on the bottom of the pictures, or it says, you know, like, left, right, below, stuff like that. It doesn't really, like, <clears throat> go into detail about whatever. <coughs> I mean, the captions are in detail, but... It's just basically just captions. And the rest of the book, like the picture, pick like three pictures on a page, and then it says all left, right, below, and then just the caption, that's it. That was basically all that was in that book. So that's why it was kind of disappointing because, you know, when you read a book like that, I mean, it was only $2, but when you think about it, it's like when you want, when you read a book, you're not used to that, and you're like, oh, I just read only like, like that book only took me like 20 minutes to read because it was just the introduction. Anyway, that was my book review video for this week. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. <coughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys next time with another video. And please subscribe.